Hey everyone, so movement methods. So the GTX RVR template contains five different movement methods. If we go to the struct S underscore character settings, we can see our movement type by default is set to smooth local motion and teleport. And we have teleport only, shift, so that moves you over time. We'll take a look at that. And then shift location, shift location on teleport, plus flying. So these are all built in. So if you want to change the default one, let's say you're doing a project that only requires teleportation, you just select teleport and then your player will automatically do that. And then you can actually change those through the menu that's included as well, but you can remove that if you don't need it. Um, so all movement method is inside of the BP underscore VR character blueprint. And there is a specific graph called movement graph. And in here it contains all the logic for those five movement methods and what's going on in here. And if you haven't seen the characters, the player settings video, then it's doing the exact same thing. So we pull in the VR game instance and then we pull in our player settings from there and then we pull those in and view them as they are. So we, we use those variables so we can save them later. But these are all broken into their separate groups. So movement methods are in there. Um, if we jump in, we can take a look. So. I can find my controllers. By default, we have smooth local motion and teleport, so I can jump and all that, and then teleport around. But what we can do in the project as well, we can actually go to settings, and then we can go to movement, and you see we can switch between these as it is. So the controllers all remap, and then we can actually update and move around. Settings, we've got shift movement, so we'll actually move over time. And then it's built in so that we can actually do that from different places as well. So we can stop mid movement. Smooth local motion does exactly what it is. So all of these rebind the controllers as well. So you can use them however you want. And then smooth local motion teleport, which is what we had by default. And that includes all the jumping and everything else. And what we can do is we can actually fly around as well. So we can use fly. So if I look backwards, we kind of use the headset's positioning. And then button inputs as well. So we can fly around the level, which is pretty cool. And then we've got a UI pop-up. So let's say you're going to use your own movement method. What you could do is inside of the movement graph, we have a section here that says set controller input based on methods. We have an array of actual movement methods that we're using, and then we cycle through these based on the movement type that we want to use. So I need to remove that player name. And what that does is, because that's in our character settings, um, character settings here, it's a type movement type, and then, or enum movement type. So in our data folder, we actually have E underscore movement type. So we can just add a new one for our name. So let's say you had swimming, you could do add new enumerator swimming, and then that would automatically update inside of our character settings. And then our player will be able to access it from here. So we have movement, ma movement mapping context, and then we could add a new movement system. We would say, okay, we want to add um, swimming. And then based on the number in the array from our movement type, that's the input mapping context would pull in. And then you could use all those input action maps for what you need. Um, so that's pretty much the section that controls our inputs. And that would allow you to change those methods around. Hopefully that makes sense. Pretty simple. So we've got our character settings, which contains our default player settings. So default was set to smooth local motion and teleport. We then have an enum, so we can add more variables here. So we can manually choose which movement method we're using. And then in the player, if we want to add a new full set of movement methods with input actions using the enhanced input system, we simply select the movement mapping context, we add it in here, and then based on the array that we go through, 
So swimming would be fifth in the, the array. We'd pull that mapping context through it and then rebind all our controllers to match that system. Um, but yeah, I think I could probably get carried away with this, but I think for adding your own and then updating and working what's there, that might be enough. Um, let me know if it's not. I'll do another video. All right.